introduce Mike Baeza with Johnson Controls, and uh, we'll get the presenta presentation started, and you have a copy before you leave the presentation this evening. So I'll just get that started. Hey, thanks so much for having me here. As Erica said, I'm Mike Baeza with Johnson Controls. And what we're gonna do is just run through a, a, a brief presentation. It'll give you a flavor for um, the RFP that we are put through by DBRPC and the benefits of the RP, uh, RFP because there's some significant benefits to them. It'll also give you, we, we took uh, your utility bills and we crunched them through our formula to come out what a project would look like in this municipality based on your utility bills, uh, some excellent data from your public works director, Doug, and Eric to help us out just to formulate that. So what the whole goal is here, if you were to do an LED streetlight retrofit, what would be the financial benefits to the municipality? What would be the cost to the municipality? And what would the payback roughly look like? I'm not going anywhere, so I'm fine. <laughs> Smack it on the side. That used to work in the old days. You know, I've used um, sometimes big boards like that, and um, everybody's like, wow, this is really old school. But it doesn't fail. I have the copy, so I can just go. I got my driver right here. Do you? All right, let's try that. <laughs> Plan B. Wait, they did a few full bit flexible. restocking the committee okay with with promise in that direction all right I'm here representing what they call the regional street light procurement program it was a program put on by DBRPC their whole concept was if we could do a regional street lighting program consisting of maybe 40 municipalities um, would we be able to drive down the cost of the fixtures, drive down the cost of the install, drive down the cost of a company doing it, and achieve a large scale, efficient, low cost project for the municipalities? This organization here is FREE, which is the Foundation of Renewable Energy. They're under contract with the Pennsylvania State Treasury. They actually have a financing arm. So this is the organization that's overseeing the program, and we're Johns Controls. We were selected as the highest responder, uh, respondent company from the RFP process. So we're going to talk about a couple things. Overview of the program, benefits of PENCEP, the Pennsylvania Guaranteed Energy Savings Act, the advantages of LEDs, what your project looks like based on your bills, uh, interview with your very helpful staff, and what a moving forward discussion would look like. So first of all, can we go back one? <coughs> This process, I guess we're not gonna go back one. Okay, exciting. let's stop right there, we're good. But the process started back in September for the RFP. We worked through the whole RFP process <coughs> and we were officially selected by DVRPC to represent them in the December timeframe. We sent out a whole bunch of questionnaires to all the municipalities, we got a ton of data back. We manipulated that data and put it in our spreadsheet to make sure it makes sense. We had what's called a midpoint meeting Right here, by the way, thank you so much for hosting that. Municipalities came in, we had a discussion on, what does this data mean? What does it look like? Uh, are we seeing this right? And then out of that, we formulated our final report, and this is where this came from. Now, a couple advantages of the program was, what it was after was a quick wholesale retrofit of your entire LED system, including DECOs, which would allow uh, for energy and operational savings to happen at one time. 
The program also had an independent consultant to oversee the RFP process and the process of the project moving forward. That company's called KLS, Keystone Lighting Solutions, and they're contracted to DVRPC, just as project oversight and technical. It also required this, full disclosure and transparency on pricing and equipment. It is an open book process. You see everything from our true cost, the markups we submit in the RFP, to your cost. This is nice too. It was very competitive, extremely competitive process. And I, we, as Johnson Controls, do a significant volume of street lighting work in Pennsylvania. So from where we normally are, which we thought we had an excellent buying price, it drove down the fixture price 18%. More impressively, it drove down the labor price 23%. These are prices we've never seen before. Um, I personally didn't think we'd get to this point, but that's where we are right now. So when you buy roughly 35,000 uh, 35, LED fixtures at one time, significant purchasing power. And these were two tenants of the program, and they really worked better than we expected. So this is what PENCEP does. PENCEP did a couple of nice things. They standardized all the documents for everyone. So the contracts, all the legal pieces, they're all standard from PENCEP, and they mimic the Pennsylvania state process. So standard process is there. It utilizes the guaranteed energy savings contract, which is, uh, uh, we're gonna work through that, but it means if we don't hit the savings we said, we get the benefit of writing the check for the shortfall. Also, the Guaranteed Energy Savings Act, the whole concept behind it is you have money that you're currently spending with utilities and outside vendors that you could recapture and reinvest in yourself to fund the project. The whole concept is budget neutral. They have access to long-term low interest financing. This project is one of four other, there's a total of five projects that PENCEP wants to go out through a large bond offering in the June, July timeframe. So you would get the benefits of a larger bond offering, which all their lower fees spread over five different projects. So I think there's two community colleges, maybe a university and that whole portfolio that are looking at. So while this project might be smaller, the whole bond offering is going to be in that $50 million range. So it should be a very advantageous for the financial end. And also, they offer free legal, financial, and technical teams. I think on Tuesday, tomorrow, there's a call. Tomorrow. Tomorrow's a call with the PENCEF team. Let's discuss the, the benefits of Pen, uh, PENCEF and the financing mechanism and to understand how that works. So this is what performance contracting is. It's how do you reinvest in your municipality with money you're already spending? Well, the Pennsylvania Guaranteed Energy, Energy Savings Act is a no-risk way to do that. In a nutshell, if you look at your utility spend right now, it's utility and maintenance. This is what you spend on your streetlights. Well, if we went to LED technology, you would reduce your energy spend and you reduce your maintenance spend. So that chunk of the pie, which you're already spending, instead of going out to an outside vendor and an outside utility company, would be coming back to you and that's how you fund your project. So hence it's self-funding. And the whole concept of getting all that data which is a significant volume, was to make sure, does this work for you? Because at the end of the day, this is a math problem. And the math either says your project works, or it doesn't. If it doesn't, there's just nothing you can do about it. Question. Yes, sir. Uh, on the, the two pie charts, so our annual expenses remain the same, but we're getting new technology. Correct. Okay. New technology actually installed too. So this is uh, what the laws are. It's uh, Act 77 and 39, and what they enable a government entity to do is enter into a performance contract up to 20 years. It said project cost, scope, and energy savings have to be guaranteed by the company, and savings much meter exceed the cost of the project over the project term, hence the term self-funding. Energy is defined in a couple ways. One is straight energy, electric oil gas reduction. When you go from old technology to new technology, energy usage drops. <coughs> We guarantee the unit reduction in that. Operational maintenance savings, that is parts, pieces you're buying, external vendors you have, that's called an agreed upon savings. We have to agree on that number. And it's your choice whether you want that in your project or not. But both of these represent dollars leaving your budget. One's the utility company, one might be to a supply house, but they're still true dollars. And this is capital cost avoidance. This usually applies to a large building retrofit, and your project is not even a consideration. 
Engineering construction and commissioning, what we call M and V, which is us proving to you the savings, have to be managed through one company, so it's single point of accountability, and we're tied to best value, price, low bid. There's no way we can guarantee a project if we can't guarantee the quality of the product going in or the quality of the, the contractor installing it. So this is what LED technology has done for us. When you look at your utility bill, you're running 1930s technology in mercury vapor and 1960 top technology in high pressure sodium. So your energy spend or consumption is based on 30s technologies and 60s technology. And I would say you're extremely similar to every other municipality in the program. So you can see 2010 is what we call when LEDs became commercially viable. And that means a couple things. The cost for them came down to a realistic level where somebody could actually buy one and the quality and warranty came up to a level where they made sense. So when you look at an LED, a new LED comes with a 10 year complete fixture warranty. That means the whole thing. If something's bad in it, you send it off, they give you a brand new one. The rated life on the fixture is about 100,000 hours. In street lighting terms, that's over 25 years. And that's the point where they start to degrade. So significant performance from these. And when you look at the energy saving side, this is what we call a commercial grade Cobra head. So like a, a two lane street, uh, double yellow line, where people are moving along, 400 watt to 101 watt. This would be like a residential section, 150 watt to 53 watt or less. Right now we're pretty much standard on like a 38 watt fixture in that range. So huge drops there. When you look at it from, this is what we call photometrics. This is some of our standard design stuff we do. When you look at it, this is 150 watt mercury vapor. You can see they have this butterfly effect. So the darker, like the black here represents intense light because what you have now is called a blob light. It just throws out a blob of night. So it's intense, duller, duller. And you can see you'll have a dark area here overlap and it spills out over the whole range because you can't control that light. LEDs by the definition are directional light. It's light where you want it, when you want it. Also notice here, you'll see there's, that's gonna be a lady and that's gonna be a fire hydrant. Right, next. So that's 150 watt mercury vapor. This is a 38 watt LED. Much broader pattern, much more spread out. And you see, remember last time we had that light off all the way out here? It's light on the road. Let's go gra graphically, this is what it looks like. So this is your 150 watt mercury vapor. You can see the lady, you can see the fire hydrant. And you can see how it's dark over here. Now let's go to the 38 watt. 38 watt, everything's brighter, more consistent. Now graphically, that's how it looks like. But in real life, this is what <coughs> This is uh, Los Angeles. So typical, um, this is probably a high pressure sodium. Light, dark, light, dark. And that's what we all have now. So the, what they did here was, this is a retrofit. You can see brighter light. A lot more light on the road, a lot better driving condition. No poles were added, no new lights were added. This is just what you have, old technology, new technology. This is Halifax, go to Nova Scotia, same scenario, same thing. You can see here, see that backlight you typically get from your front pictures? Look at the LEDs, backlight is not there. Now I guess since LA has a lot of time on their hands, they did some statistical studies so from 2009 to 2011, what they said was vehicle theft went down 13.6%, robbery 8%, and vandalism 11%. And it's really just a definition of brighter light. We have, with every single municipality we do, we ask for police and security involvement for a couple of reasons. Where do you always have accidents? Let's light that place up. Where do you have things going on that, you know what, shouldn't be going on? In one town, we, the, the biggest thing was I have a 7-Eleven, I want it lit up like a football stadium. We lit it up like a football stadium, you know what? That activity doesn't happen there anymore. What do we do? Just lit the place up. So what we did was we looked at, this is the basic project we looked at here, was your cover heads, converting them to LED, deco street lights, converting them to LED, uh, a wireless control system for the cover heads, and a wireless control system does a, does a couple of things for you. First of all, it gives you the ability to dim your lights. So what you'll have when you dim your lights is you'll have a sequence, like in Westchester we did this. 
So when the lights come on for the first half hour, they're 50%, then they ramp up to 80, and then an hour before sunset, they drop down. Another thing with LED lights is between 80 and 100%, the human eye can't tell the difference. But that, since we're dimming them, that also equates to an energy reduction. So we were able to go to Pico when we did the first retrofit and say, okay, here's your new bill. Then controls also gather what's called utility grade metering. So you can now get true wattage usage per fixture. We are able to go out to Pico for another wattage reduction. It's about a 20-25% reduction, so two steps. Now, the reduction is not that great, so the fact that you're saving energy on the wireless controls is nice, but it won't fund them. So you really have to want to use wireless controls. Some other features such as, they'll tell you what light's out, and why it's out. They'll also give you the ability if you have, um, you want a strobe light, you want to, this was a new one that came up the other day, they wanted to dim the lights during a holiday season in the downtown area because their ornamental lights were up for the holidays. I'm like, sure, you can do that. But it gives you more control and actually gives you a way to manage your street lights. This is a different view on what that's for. And then we looked at, um, here was traffic light upgrades. And um, one of the nice features of this town is your decorative lights are on a meter. So you get true benefits, which is really nice. So this is your existing street lighting bill. You can see that it's broken up, mercury vapor, high pressure sodium. You have 1,831 lights, and then uh, you have this number of 1,820. 1,820 is called a TAP fee, or service distribution charge. That's a standard PICO fee. It means they charge you $7.08 for every one of the TAPs into their line. That number doesn't change, I can't affect that. So that number equates to 154,000. What you actually pay for energy, is $81,000, and that's what we can affect. So when you look at this, this is called your energy savings summary. So this is how your bill is set up. Here's your current fixture that PICO has on their inventory. Here's your billed wattages. Here's your quantities, energy usage, and costs. So this says, I have that 1,831 lights. There's my tap fee I can't change, and here's my energy usage. So then when we do an LED retrofit, here's the manufacturer. This will be the new proposed wattages, quantities, and you see this number right here, this $28,000? That would be your new bill. $52,000 would be your energy savings. So that's what I call working capital. And then that service distribution charge never changes. So then another opportunity here was traffic lights. Now you have a, a grant coming, hopefully? A closed loop signal system. A closed loop signal system, excuse me. Mm -hmm. But you have a very good opportunity for the same type of savings in traffic lighting. Traffic lighting is typically the quickest payback item we do. So when you look at this, $42,000 is what you pay now. Again, they have a service distribution charge, but they charge at a much lower rate. So when you look at a retrofit, here's your new bill, $4,400. Here's your savings, $38,000. Nice bunch of working capital. So traffic lights are great. Typically, the first thing we look at is traffic lights uh, because they're the quickest payback item. Are there also wireless controls for No, there's not, sir. So when you look at it, this is what we call the energy savings summary, or what do we have to work with? <coughs> so when you look at Cobra heads, $52,000, nice number. Wireless controls, it's only $7,000, and that's the definition of, because I already saved all this money here. So 25%, that's all I could do there. So it's, again, most savings come from the LED retrofit, a small savings from the controls, but controls give you other things, and that's really why you look at them. Look at that, there's your traffic lights. Now you have meter deco lights, which is a huge advantage to your municipality. So that's that money there. So your total base project is $91,000, base project which controls is $98,000. You have a good lump of working capital. So then we do what's called project cost and savings. So when you look at this, this is, we had to submit in the RFP what our cost of labor would be, what our cost of the COBRA heads would be. And our whole goal in this type of project is what we call sustainability. But to us, that's not 
the green piece or the energy piece, it's sustaining the tax dollar in the local community. So we go out of our way to find a local vendor with a local installer to keep all everything local. We're out of Plymouth Meeting. <coughs> our distribution partner is Wesco. They're out of Nordstown. And our manufacturer's rep is out of Philadelphia. So the whole goal is keep it local. Another reason too, if you call somebody, you wanna call somebody right here. We care about the community because this is our community. So $600,000 is construction cost. Here's that energy savings number. This operational savings number was $16,000, and we took that as parts and pieces that you're currently purchasing, and that number came from your staff. And again, that's your choice to use that or not, but that's an agreed upon number we spent a lot of time analyzing to make sure everybody's comfortable with it. This is rebates from Pico. We do those rebates. It'll be a check sent to you right from Pico. So when you look at simple payback, it's 7.9 years. If you take out this number, it's 10.3. Now look at the wireless controls. Again, this is why I said, this is something you do for other than savings. $492,000, very little savings. Rebates are there, large payback. Now traffic lights, $142,000, 38,992. Rebates, 3.1 year payback. And then here's your decos, 33, 1100. 23 years. But when you blend it all together, you have a really great project. So when you look at it, if you do the base project, $783,000, payback 6.4 years. Excellent payback. Now you add the controls. It's still 10 years. Excellent payback. So this is all comes down to one big sheet. This is called our cash flow. And this is, does it make financial sense? Yes or no? And this is where the proof's in the pudding. So, this is the base project, $783,000. We put this item here of customer controlled contingency for one purpose. This is money that's held on your side of the equation. If we're going aerial to look at your cover heads and we're running down your street and we find a burnt wire or an arm that's cracked, most people would say, let's replace it then. So what we come up with some standard pricing that we had to do for the RFP, if we find those items, this is what would be the cost to replace them. So if we run down and we find nothing, this money stays on your side of the equation, if it's not. If there is something, that's the money we use for that because our whole goal is keep that construction crew moving, keep them doing their job, and not stopping them so they're efficient. Uh, the program had a KLS, uh, uh, that's their consultant. They administered the RFP and put it all together. So that's their RFP fee, and that's their fee spread over 47 municipalities. So then we looked at uh, the, the structure that Penn Step's looking at is a large bond offering, then you'll issue a municipal lease to everyone. So that's a lease structure. Contract term's not 20 years, what it means is a 20 year model. We said construction term about a year. Interest rate we roughly ran in, just for a plug number, is 2.75. So total is 823 would be your total cost. So we look at measured utility savings over 20 years, 2.4 million. O&M savings, 478,000. Here's your rebates. So you come up with total savings. What this means to me is a couple things. If you do nothing and keep operating your street lighting system as you are now, you're gonna spend $3 million more than you need to on this system. Or another way to look at it is, I have $3 million to reinvest in my system to upgrade it to LED. So if I did that, I would fund, fully fund that after interest and after measurement and verification, I would put $2 million back in my general fund. So by definition, you have a great project. Financially, base project, clear winner in my eyes. Now we add controls into it. Controls give you a little more savings. <laughs> O&M stays the same. Rebuild goes up now because your savings are greater. Controls also have a fee called a cloud service, 10 years complete. This is years 11 to 20. There would be a cloud service fee required to keep the controls operating. So we had to model that in there. So now your total savings is about 3.19 million. Debt service is 1.5, and the B is 30. So this one is, if I, same thing, if I do nothing and keep operating the same way, I'll spend that, or I could, upgrade everything and put 1.6 billion dollars back in the general fund again great project payback here is roughly 12 years 
So either way, you have a really nice project and you can do whatever you want with that because it makes a lot of financial sense. So this is the last piece of it. Part the RFP required us to come up with what's called a break fee. The break fee was this. If we go to what the next step is, which is called the investment grade audit, which will show up here, we'll build, we'll actually survey every single street light and ornamental fixture you have. We'll do what we call, we'll build you up. It's called a map that we build. So we can classify your streets in the standard streetways. We can design the control system. We can do all the fixture selection, the hard pricing, all the engineering. And we come to say probably June when it's done, we present it to council and you say no. This would be the walk away fee or the break fee for our engineering work. This was part of the RFP. It was based on 7.4% of the hard cost before any of our ESCO fees were applied. So JCI hard cost for the covers would be 34,000, street lights 27,000, traffic lights eight, metered light would be 1,800. So $72,000 would be the walk away fee if you decided not to do a project. So that is the presentation on, I guess, April 6th, correct? Is our next council meeting? Yep.